we've got a little bit of a light crowd, but we got some visitors. I want to welcome you all for being here. Sometimes I want to run upstairs with the kids and see what they're doing. So I guess I'll stay here. Um, seemed like there was something I was going to talk about before we got started. Does this seem too loud? Seems like I'm... Rawr. Back there they say it's good. So you front row people have to suffer. Sorry. Oh, I know what I want to do. All right, I'm ready. I woke up finally. So I want to read you this story today because there's so much in it that I don't want to miss any of the words. <clears throat> I don't usually make points. I'm not going to make points today really, but you could make about eight out of this. It's only eight verses. Mark 10, 46. I told this story yesterday out in the arena, but I want to just talk more about it because it's, uh, it's really kind of blessing me. So then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the road, begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, Jesus said. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. So when Bartimaeus heard it was Jesus, passing by, he began to shout so loud it annoyed the crowd. Who told him to be still, but he shouted louder and all the more. Have you ever been, have you ever dealt with somebody who wouldn't take no for an answer? You give them the polite disclaimer <laughs> and they don't stop and they keep coming in and they keep defeating your excuses and um, yeah. Well, remember the widow who pestered <laughs> the unjust judge until he gave in and gave her justice over her enemies. And remember the friend who came and knocked on his friend's door in the middle of the night because he had unexpected guests asking for bread. And he kept knocking until he got all he wanted, not because he was his friend, but because he wouldn't stop knocking. James says, you have not because you ask not. Jesus said, ask of me and I'll give it to you. And Paul says, all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, Bartimaeus was calling. Bartimaeus was shouting. Bartimaeus was not going to be denied. He'd heard about Jesus, and here he was on his street. He was shouting. He sprang to his feet and came to Jesus when Jesus said, call him. Have you ever been so desperate for relief, for healing, for deliverance, for separation from something that holds you that you won't stop shouting that you come running to Jesus well Jesus is calling you no matter where you are no matter what you've done no matter where you've been whatever state you're in run to Jesus he won't turn you away we think when we've sinned that he'll be mad at us that it's too late. We've gone to the well too many times. None of that is true. He loves you, and He's calling you. Come to Him. He's waiting on you. Jesus stopped in the road and said, Call Him. 
and he waited on him. He's waiting on you. Well, Bartimaeus came and flung himself down, and Jesus said, What do you want me to do for you? Some people don't like that question. Some people say he really didn't mean it that way. He didn't really mean, what do you want? I mean, is that true? Some people, especially ones who make rules, think that that maybe is a scandalous question. They make rules for dress and behavior that they hide behind because maybe they're afraid to come to Jesus and receive their sight and their healing. Well, Jesus really does love you. And he really does ask today, what do you want me to do for you? There's an old song. <laughs> Randy Travis sings it. And it goes, I've got Jesus on the main line. Ask him what you want. I've got Jesus on the main line. Ask him what you want. You can call him up and ask him what you want. So I did a survey, and one out of one respondents thought that that was presumptuous. I won't tell you who that is. I won't look at her either. <laughs> There's more. <clears throat> Sorry. But Bartimaeus said, Rabbi, I want to see. Do you remember the story in the Gospel of John? There was a man born blind. He was begging in the temple. And Jesus came by and made some mud and put it in his eyes and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And he came back seeing. And the religious leaders had a fit. They called him into court and his parents and said, wanted to know if he was really the one who was born blind. And how is it that you now see? The parents said, Ooh, we don't know. He's old enough to take care of himself. We're out of here. They said, the Jewish leaders said, we know that this man is a sinner. Give glory to God. And the man said, whether or not he's a sinner, I don't know. But one thing I know, I was blind, but now I see. Jesus saw him later in the crowd, and he came up to him, and he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? And he said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe? When Jesus was last there with him, he was blind. He had never seen him. And Jesus said, The one that's speaking to you is he. You have now seen me, and I'm speaking to you. And he said, Lord, I do believe, and worshiped him. And then Jesus said to those standing around, there were some religious leaders still there, for judgment I've come into the world so that the blind can see and that those who can see will become blind. And they said, what? Are we blind too? And Jesus said, if you said that you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But because you claim that you can see, your guilt remains. You see, if you refuse Jesus, if you despise the gift of God, the grace of God that God planned from the beginning of the world, then your guilt remains because there's no other sacrifice for sins. There's no other way to have your guilt removed. But come to Jesus and receive your sight. Jesus said to Bartimaeus, Go, your faith has healed you. Not every time that someone was healed, but many times when someone was healed by Jesus, he gave credit to their faith. The woman with the issue of blood, your faith has healed you. To the man lowered through the roof, your faith has healed you. Your faith. Where does faith come from? Pastor Charity talked about it Thursday night. We're all given a measure of faith, and it grows bigger and stronger by hearing by hearing the Word of God. This Word is faith. This book is not about faith. It is faith. 
And as you read it, your faith grows and strengthens. There is no substitute for reading this book. You can't function well in the kingdom unless you read this book over and over again. And every time you read it, I'm stunned how I see stuff I've never seen before. I've heard stuff I've never heard before. God speaks to you through this book. If you're not reading it, reading it, reading it, you need to. Your faith will grow. Well, you see, blind Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus. He had heard the Word of God. The stories about Jesus were everywhere. He heard, and in faith he believed. And in the last verse of this passage, it says, he received his sight and followed Jesus. You see, by what Jesus did on the cross, he took our place, he paid our debt, he restored us to fellowship with the Father, just like Adam had in the garden, only even better, because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And because of that ransom paid on the cross, well, it's already paid for us. It's already waiting on us. Salvation. And that salvation includes forgiveness, but it also includes healing and deliverance. And it's paid for. So another Janine story. She got a letter card in the mail on Friday, a little card from the post office, says you have a parcel at the post office. So she was busy over here getting ready for this. Didn't go to the post office. So I asked her Saturday morning, I said, well, did you get your package? No. We kind of knew who it was from. My sister was sending her something. She said, I, I said, they're probably open till noon. Well, okay. She was busy, came over here. But my daughter went, Lydia, and picked up the package and took it home. Well, Janine was at the rodeo all day. So although it was at the house, it wasn't at the post office, she hadn't really taken possession of it. So in the evening, when we got home, she took it out of the package and put it on. Still on. No, I think she took it off, put it back on. <laughs> Tried it on. <laughs> you see, we put on the garments of righteousness. We put on the garments of praise. Paul says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. It won't do you any good in the box. It won't do you any good at the post office. You've got to go get it. Take it out of the package. Put it on. And then it'll do you some good. Jesus spoke to the churches in Revelation, the third chapter. He said to the Laodiceans, He said, you're neither hot nor cold. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And then He said of them, they say of themselves that they're rich and have need of nothing. That's our society. We have everything. We live in America. We have everything. We don't need anything. We don't need God. We don't need rules. Why would we need that? But Jesus said of these people and of us, you don't know, you don't realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. It's like our society is deluded by the world, by the prince of the world, by Satan. The things that are going on are just bizarre. This bathroom thing, it's just unthinkable. Roll the clock back 10 years and ask yourself, would that ever happen? Nah. It's a strange world we live in. It's like they are unable to perceive how strange things are. But Jesus said, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may become truly rich, true riches stored for you in heaven and white clothes to wear 
to cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes that you can see. White clothes refer to the righteousness of God. We are clothed with His righteousness. We are covered by the blood. We put on His righteousness. Just like Janine put on her shirt. The salve is the anointing of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, who God pours out on all who come to Him. And He takes away our blindness. Then Jesus said, Behold, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, Bartimaeus heard his voice. Bartimaeus heard and believed. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. And then he says, all whom I love, I rebuke. I rebuke and discipline. It is by His Spirit. This discipline comes by His Spirit inside of us. He teaches us and rebukes us. All who come to Him to forsake the world and its blindness and to turn, for him, turn to Him not only for healing, but for sight, for true riches for true righteousness. Come to Him. Let Him in. Do you still think you can see? Do you have need of nothing? Bartimaeus knew he was blind, and he knew who could heal him. He called out to him, and he came running to him. And he asked the same question today. What do you want me to do for you? No, you're not really asking that. Yes, he is. What do you want me to do for you today? Nothing is impossible for God. He gave his only son for you. There is nothing he would withhold from you. Come to him. He's calling you. Open your heart to him and receive what he has for you and tell him what you want we're going to pray you pray tell him what you want what do you need father i thank you in jesus name that you're here and i thank you that you've already paid for the things we need for sight for righteousness, for healing, for deliverance, for forgiveness. You've already paid to wash us clean and make us new creatures in Christ Jesus. Father, and as we ask for what we need and what we want, and we ask you to come into our hearts, we thank you that you're coming and healing and giving and delivering. And we commit ourselves into your hands for today and for forever. We thank you that you love us. We thank you for the rodeo coming up and all that goes on here. We thank you for your peace in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Take an offering and play a song.